let's take some audio aptitude questions here question 1 find the greatest number that will divide 4391 and 183 the second part it leaves no remainder or it leaves the same remainder in each case so as to leave the same remainder in each case okay so the remainder has to be the same and it has to be the greatest number okay here are the four options that your time starts now pass the video and do the job okay the answer is option A how we got that number it's quite easy we have to find the highest common factor of these two num numbers subtracted subsequent numbers subtracted okay there is a reason we'll look into the reason later so if you subtract 91 minus 43 183 minus 91 183 minus 43 it's 48 92 140 so you have to find the highest common factor you know how to find the highest common factor yes it's as simple as that why we need to take this um you can ask for between two differences between two numbers it's very easy if you take the difference it eliminates the uncommon factors and at last we have only to pick up the highest common factor so uncommon factors will be gone when we take uh, subtract these two numbers okay then you can try with the same example for example if you take factors 30 10 and uh, this thing so you can see see the factorization you can take the highest common fact let's go to the next one which of the following fraction is the largest there are four options here you have to find out which one is the largest remember we don't have much time so find out a method to find it out this is just a fraction idea okay the and the answer is option a how did we get that lcm of 8, 16, 40, and 80 is 80. So 7 by 8 equals 70 by 80. So you remember when you find out the LCM, you bring the denominator and the numerator to the same level. It is 80 multiplied by 10, is 16 multiplied by 5, like that. Okay. So you bring that up, then you know since the denominators are same, the numerator decides the largeness. So 7 by 8 is obviously the right answer in this case okay okay let's go to the next sum which one is the denominator what number fits the denominator to give you an answer 0.01 a b c or d yes take a break bring out the answer fast yes the answer is option c Let's see how we got that option C here. It's very simple. Instead of question mark, put it as a variable x. Now exchange these two numbers, multiply by 100, you get the answer. It's pretty simple. Okay, one. The least perfect square, which is divisible by each of these numbers. Remember the least perfect square. Which one is that? It has to be divisible by all these numbers. What should we use? Okay. The answer is option A. How did we get it? Simple. Take the LCM of all these the three numbers which needs to be divided divisible by. So we found the LCM as 2,772. Factorize them. So you see 2 into 2, 3 into 3 and only left people are 7 and 11. To make it a perfect square, what do you have to do? Multiply by 7 and 11. Just 7 and 11. That makes it a complete square in all numbers. When you multiply that, the answer is 213444. Okay. Let's go to the next sum. <coughs> root x equal to the sum value. Root 3 plus 1, root 3 minus 1. y equal to root 3 minus 1 divided by root 3 plus 1. Then the value of x square plus y square is okay, very easy. Remember, use the opposite method like quadratic equation kinda just to re remove the square root and find out the answer. 
Got to do it fast. Okay. The answer is C, 14. How did we get the answer? It's quite simple. Just in your workplace, multiply X with the opposite sign. First, eliminate the denominator by multiplying same number. That means root 3 plus 1 divided by 3 minus 1. So now simplify this so you get this answer. Same way y multiplied by the opposite sign. So that this goes off. The denominator is 3 minus 1. Same way 2 minus 3 is the answer. So then easy to find x square plus y square from the since we know x and y, what we have to do? Yes, x square is this one, y square is this one. Remember, here it is minus, minus 4 root 3 and plus 4 root 3 gets cancelled. So 2 square plus root 3, the 4 plus root 3 is 3. You have to have 2 times. You are adding up 2 times. So, answer is 14. Good job. Let's take one more question. What's Arun's present age? Here are the three answers. From here you have to define what's the right answer. Okay. Five years ago, Arun's age was double that of his son's age at that time. Five years ago. Present age of Arun and his son are in the ratio 11 is to 6. Respectively. Okay. Five years hence, the respective ratio of Arun's age and his son's age will become 12 is to 7. Ago, double, currently 11 is to 6, 5 years from now, 12 is to 7. So, what are all the possible answers? Choices are, now his age is only 1 and 2, or his age is 2 and 3, only 1 and 3, any 2 of the 3, none of this. What could be the answer? Okay. The answer is option D. Any of these 3. Any of this? Any 2 of these 3. Okay, good. Any 2 of the 3 mm -hmm, is the answer. Why? Let's see the explanation. Present age of Arun and his son B, 11x, 6x. Okay, so it's the second point. Okay, from the first point, 5 years ago, 2 into his son's age, double the age. 5 years since, Arun's, Arun's age by son's age is 12 by 7. Any two of the above will give Arun's present age. Right? Any two will give Arun's present age. Therefore, correct act is D. Good job. A equal to X percentage of Y and B equal to Y percentage of then X then which of the following is true? A is smaller than B, A is greater than B, relationship between A and B cannot be determined. X is smaller than Y, then A is greater than B. None of the above. Slowly study the questions. Okay, but we have less time. Still we got to do it fast jump to the answer. The answer is option E. None of these. Why? Let's see for the explanation. X percentage of Y is X by 100 into Y. That is equal to Y percentage of X. Okay. You can change X and Y to have Y by 100. Okay. That is equal to Y percentage of X. Therefore, A equal to B. So, we don't have a choice like a and B are same. We only have S is smaller, B is smaller, etc. Not A, but A and B are equal. Okay, let's go do one more sum. It's going to be a little different this time. 20% of A equal to A equal to B. Then B percentage of 20 is same as. Yes, pass the video and try to find your answer. B percentage of 20. 20% 20 of A. Is B. So, B percentage of 20 is the same as 4 percentage of A, 5 percentage of A, 20 of A, none of this. Okay. Answer is option A, 4 percentage of A. You know why? So, first we found 
20 percentage of A is equal to 20 by 100 into A is equal to B. So B percentage of 20 is equal to B by 100, right? Uh, okay, B by 100 into 20 that is equal to B. We know that B equal to, what is B? Substituting that B here, okay, and dividing by 2, you get 4 by 100, that is 4 percentage of A. Slowly pass the video and do that. This is the derivation and from where substitution is happening here. Good. Let's go to the another sum here. Three pumps working eight hours a day can empty a tank in two days. How many hours a day must four pumps work to empty the tank in one day? Three pumps empty a tank eight hours okay, in two days. Okay. 9, 10, 11, 12. What's the right answer? Pause the video and find it. Okay. Let me jump to the answer here. The answer is option D, 12. Why so? Simple. The required number of working hours per day be X. More pump, less work hours per day. Right? That's in indirect proportion, in inversely proportional. Less days, more working hours per day. That's also inversely proportional. Okay. So now, 4 is to 3, days 1 is to 2 is to 8 is to x. So 4 is to 3, 1 is to 2, days wise, pump wise. Hmm? 4 into 1, eh? 1 into x, 3 into 2 into 8. Hmm? That's all. Very simple. So x equal to 3 into 2 e into 8 by 4, that equal to 12. All we have to do is substitute that, bring it up like this and uh, divide it out by 4. So x equal to 12. So remember the question. Per day, more pump, less work, per pump, all these things. So what was the question here? Remember once again, more pumps, less work. Uh, 3 pumps working 8 days. Can be attack in two days, okay? Eight hours. Okay, likewise, you have to establish a yes proportion to find solve this answer. Okay, okay. For now, let's say that's it. I'll meet you in the next video.